Okay, I think it's uh, now good. So I'll just uh, go ahead. And uh, so today I'm gonna show how to read your blockchain transaction. Okay, so on the blockchain, everything's on chain. So it's very important to know what you're doing. And uh, you can not only know what you're doing and also you can like track, uh, identify the different uh, transactions what the relation what what is their relationship and you can uh, know what is the potentially risk or how exactly your assets is being spent okay so first we're gonna do this is the agenda today we will show some basic knowledge and we'll give you some example how to read your transaction then we are going on chain to execute the a smart contract directly on the block explorer okay that's the agenda today so first basic knowledge okay so first uh, i just pick up some like something maybe i think uh, some, some uh, pick up the feedbacks collected from the community and uh, i'll try to explain some ideas and uh, if you understand this concept it will be helpful to to, uh, to read your own transaction so first is a gas limit okay so best gas limit is basically it defines how much gas you plan to spend in the transaction so normally you will not be used 100 percent but it just uh, shows indicates a number that the maximum gas you are willing to pay okay so that's the limit setting and the next is the transaction cost transaction cost is equal to the gas you use multiply the gas price you set so the gas price you set is in gray so you can define how much gray you want to put per one gas then once it's multiplied by the gas you use you get the total transaction cost okay so you need a gas token to pay for the transaction okay each transaction you have to use a gas token to pay to the validator, somebody gonna do the work for you, right? So if you are in a centralized exchange like Binance, then uh, you don't do it because it's in a closed loop system, so they can somehow just uh, not charging you of the transaction cost. So in BNB chain, which is the Binance Smart Chain right now, it's renamed to BNB chain now. The gas token is BNB, and in Ethereum it will be ETH. So if it's in the uh, Phantom, you'll be in FTM. If it's in Polygon, you'll be in Matic. So that's it, transaction cost. You need a gas token and you know need to know how the cost is calculated. The next one is how the smart contract workflow works. So first, if you are interacting with a new contract, you didn't act with it before, you have to approve first. So this is the first step. You have to approve the smart contract to spend your assets. Okay. So usually it's uh, not most of the contract, like 99%, 95% of the contract. Once you are in the approval stage, it will uh, just preset as a limited amount for you. So once you approve, you approve a limited amount for the smart contract to spend your assets. Okay. But uh, actually you can, uh, just make a cap on the approval so for example if i'm swapping bsd token i can set like 1000 bsd is the as the maximum approval token for this small contract so my risk is capped at 1000 bsd so that means if i set the limit at 1000 and i use already 200 for the swapping already then i still have 800 BUSD as my risk exposure to the smart contract uh, exploit. So that means if somebody really like exploit the pancake swap count smart contract uh, and they can use the they can take the BUSD away. So the maximum risk exposure for you is 800 because you only approve for 1000, right? But most of the case, probably you will approve just unlimited because it's just easier for you to do the transaction in the future. So uh, 
you can somehow think about that. I mean, for the really trustworthy team, trustworthy small contract, you can do an unlimited approval. But uh, for some small contract, you can probably just give it a cap. Or once you finish the transaction, once you finish the small contract you want to do, then you can just revoke the approval. You will also be okay. So if you really care about the risk management, you have to set a limit of each approval and try to revoke once you finish whatever you want to do. So then uh, you will still uh, keep the risk, the rest of your portfolio safe. So once you uh, interact with a smart contract, the first step is to give an approval to a smart contract because the smart contract has to spend your assets. Okay. And uh, the second step is the execution. So you execute the smart contract function and the smart contract function will spend your assets. So for example, if you are working with, if you are trying to execute the swap function of a pancake swap, then you first have to approve the, the proof. For example, I'm trying to swap BUSD to some other token. And I have to approve the spending of my BUSD first. Then I have to call a function of the smart contract from pancake swap. To do a swap, then uh, the smart contract will come to my address and take my money away. Then they will do the function swap and after that they will give you the token that you deserve according to the condition and parameters. Okay, so this is basically how it works. Even for a token contract like BUSD, okay, if I'm trying to send BUSD to you, then I'm actually interacting with the BUSD smart contract as well. So in the BUSD smart contract, it's a token contract, it's packed to USD, it's packed to the BUSD in Ethereum as well, but there's a function called transfer. So when I'm sending my BUSD to you, I'm actually calling the transfer function of the BUSD smart contract, okay? So this is basically how smart contract works. Okay, so the next step, uh, we have to know how to read your transaction on BSC scan. So this is basically a block explorer, we show you how to do it. So first, this is uh, somehow the, the, the screen you will see on the BSC scan. So you have the address and you have an overview of your balance, your BNB value and the token you have and the name tag. And then you can see the transaction, the internal transaction, BP20 token transfer. You can analyze, you can give comment. Okay, uh, of course, on the right hand top side, you can see the some more analytical data, resources, charts, whatever it is, block data, and you can also uh, have your own account, right? So whatever you want to search, you can just put it the blank here, the field here, then you can try to search different address or different tokens, okay? So there's a, there's a explanation on the ether scan. Okay, so if you want to re really know what each individual description means, you can uh, go to the Etherscan to read the handbook. And if you are in the traditional like uh, transaction data, then you see uh, information like this. First, you have a transaction hash. This is basically a unique transaction ID. And then the status indication then uh, it will show you which block is finished, what is the time, what is the source of the wallet, okay, and what kind of contract you're interacting. For example, as I just say, if I'm sending the BUSD to you, I'm actually interacting with the BUSD small contract, okay. So I'm the initiator, I initiate the transaction, I initiate, I try to implement the function with the BUSD small contract. So I'm sending from this, this is my wallet, from here to here, to the destination. Okay. So for uh, 400 US, uh, BUSD, okay. And uh, I didn't send the BNB value and uh, the transaction fee in total is uh, $0.11, which is 0 0.0002555575 BNB. 
the gas limit when I'm triggering the transaction I set as 676 672 okay this is actually preset on the metamask so you actually you don't have to worry about this I allow to use maximum this amount of gas and uh, when the transaction is done it actually only use 66.67 percent of the gas so it didn't use everything and for each gas price I set it at 5 gui so that means one gas is 5 gui okay so uh, if you time if you multiply the 5 gui with the gas we use then you get a transaction cost and this is the input data they have some input data so if you take a look at here actually the input data you are calling a function of the smart contract for example right now we are calling a function of transfer and we are sending to an address okay but don't worry about that we will get into more detail later so now we can uh, try to act let me do it right now let's click our link then uh, we will try to do the uh, swap okay this is the uh, the pancake swap page we try to swap let's make an example let's try to swap like 100 weave uh, BUSD to weave and let's click swap okay 100 BUSD I will have 164 weave in my pocket the price impact and minimum reply conference swap fail okay the transaction will not succeed due to the price movement of fee on the transfer try to increase your slippage tolerance so right now we have to come here and increase our slippage okay Bef uh, before it's set at 0 0.5 percent we need to set it at 2.6 percent or 3 percent let's set it 3 percent okay the uh in buying or selling with this is necessary because this is part of our uh tokenomic design and uh, I can put it like I want to put it one way for you to try but uh, it didn't allow me to do so but anyway okay let's put it 3% as slippage and uh, standard 5 way okay then I click swap sign the transaction okay waiting for some transaction so now it pop up the 10k swap uh, the MetaMask. Okay, so now I'm calling, interacting with the Pancake Swap. I'm swap exact token for tokens. I'm calling this function. The detail is the gas fee looks no more, and uh, this is the gas fee I'm going to pay. And I can edit the gas fee as well. I can include uh, increase the gas limit. No problem. I can include the gas way again. But actually, if you pay attention, you can actually change it in the pancake swap page already. You don't have to do it here. I'm just trying to show you how to do it here. Click save, and you can see the data. It will show you what kind of function you are calling and what kind of parameters you are doing. But this is not available in the BSC chain right now in MetaMask. Okay, and this is the hex format. Okay, then I click confirm. Then you will go through, then it's done. Okay, let me see what's next. Okay. So now I can come to this is my this is my wallet address. I can just come to this uh, BSC scan. I can type my wallet address, click search, then you will search. Okay, now it comes through the transaction. We have a transaction 22 seconds ago. It's done in block 164.21190. And we are calling a function called swap exact token for tokens. We are interacting with pancake swap. Okay, so this is a transaction. This is a transaction hash. And uh, internal tax, well, this is this didn't mean a lot in a, for a normal user. So we can just check here BP20 tokens. Okay, it says 53 seconds ago we have two transaction okay one is uh, sending out 100 BUSD and the other one is receiving 160 weave okay 
but you are seeing two transactions here. This is two BP20 token transaction, right? You talk, see two transactions here, but in reality, it's actually one transaction hash. So you can just click one here, click here. Then you can see this is the unique transaction ID, but it actually represents two things. One is you are giving out the BUSD, the other one is you are receiving weave. So that's why you see two different lines here, but actually it's the same transaction, okay? So now, okay, this is transaction ID, status success, block, this is the block that it, it, it is confirmed, it was confirmed. And it's from this address, this is my address, okay? I'm interacting with this contract, PancakeSwap Router V2, okay? And token transfer, okay, we are sending to the PancakeSwap uh, V2 router, 100 BUSD. Oh, we are sending to this pair, okay? We are sending here 100 BUSD, okay? And the pancake swap function is sent back to me, this is my address, 160.3 blah, 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 with tokens. So you can see there, here we send 0 0.82 to a new address. This means it's a burning address. So whenever it's sent to this address, it's burned, it's gone. It's forever is gone, okay? So uh, this is because in our tokenomic design, we have 0.5% transaction fee sent to the burn address and 0.5% fee sent to the treasury and 1.5% sent to the staking contract. So that's why you see here, this is 0.5% sent to the burn and this is 0.5% sent to the treasury. So this is our treasury address. So this is 1% sent to the staking contract. So this is our staking contract address, okay? So this is how you read this transaction. So following these transactions, you can just follow the uh, the track and you can find your own way to, to the source of like uh, uh, whatever is your destination or you can find, uh, if you found a new wallet, you want to know, okay, what, uh, how it is connected to the different wallet that you can analyze those data in the block explorer, okay? And uh, so the value here, the amount of BNB to be transferred, this is no BNB involved, so it's, there's none. And the transaction fee is 0 0.4 gas limit to A5384. And the gas use is 53, 56.63% uh, and gas price is six square as we said. Nouns means the, the, the index, okay, the index, the sequence. Okay, so now, now you can see the input data here. So input data here, you see this, it seems hard to understand, okay? You can read it in different format, even harder to understand. And what about this? This is even harder to understand, but you can, you know, decode. You can decode the data so you can find that actually you are coding a function. You are calling this function swap exact tokens for tokens. This is the function you call. And in this function calls, you can have different parameters. So this is the parameters you give in the transaction. So the amount you send is this. And the amount minimum you receive is this. You feel weird because uh, in the blockchain, most of the tokens are set in 18 decimals. So you have to remove 18 zeros to really show the uh, correct numbers. So this is 100. Okay, we are sending 100 to swap, right? So this is 18 zero, I guarantee you, you can count. But this is 18 zero, so we send out the 18 zeros and we got the minimum 159.62 blah, 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 as a minimum token we would like to receive during the transaction, okay? And the path, this is the path because you still have to, you know, transfer to different tokens, right? So BUSD is this token, this is BUSD. If I click, this is BUSD. Okay, BUSD as you saw. And uh, this is Weave. So as you see, this is Weave, okay? So this means the token path that you want to use. Uh, the reason it used here is because uh, that uh, in a pancake swap, probably you sometimes you have to swap to BNB first, then you swap to the desired token. So that's why you have, might have different path. Okay, 
the address is the recipient of the address. This is my address. So it's sent back to me. The deadline is that, okay, if the transaction is not confirmed within some time, then I will give up the transaction. So this is the time deadline of the transaction. Okay. So uh, this is it. Basically, this is how you read the transaction. So as explained here, uh, you saw two transactions, but actually it's one because it's the same transaction ID. And uh, this is, okay, 1% go to staking, 0 0.5 to treasury, 0 0.5 to burning. This is how you read a transaction. So you don't have to feel, you don't have to worry. And sometimes the smart contract will be written in different way. So you just have to know how the smart contract works, what kind of logic it is when it is writing the smart contract. So you might have different transactions when you review the transaction. You might you might see some, uh, okay, the token, some token is gone, it moved to different address. And for example, in our uh, swapping contract is sent some tokens to staking, treasury, and burning as well, right? So if you can read the transaction, you know how it works. So if you are acting acting with a malicious contract, then you see, okay, maybe there's some uh, weird amount of tokens that is being sent to a different address, okay? So now we give some uh, like FAQ, why the transaction fails, okay? Depends on the fail reason, you can try to, you can probably solve it by try again or you can increase the gas limit, or you can reset the mask, meta mask, then try again. Or you can clean the browser cache, okay. Or sometimes it might be, uh, the reason might be the smart contract execution error. So it will usually cause a high gas cost estimation. So if that happens, that means you execute the function and the function will not go through, so that's why it returns a bad value, therefore you get an incredibly high gas cost estimation. So that means 100% I'm sure you'll get your, your small contract, your transaction will not be proof, will not be passed, will not be succeed. Then you better call, discuss with the small contract owner to check what happened, okay? So if the small contract is pending, then you can uh, speed up the transaction, you can increase the grade, so you can get higher priorities. Okay. So uh, now we show you how to uh, act with weave staking contract on blockchain. Okay, so now let's go to the weave. This is the weave website, the smart contract. So if we want to stake, or if we want to stake the token, we can just click here, right? So let's try five stake. So in here, we can try to, we, we are calling a deposit function, then we are spending this amount of gas for transaction. Then once we click, click confirm, it will go through and it will stake into the smart contract. So right now we can just do like two quay. Okay, so usually two quay will, well, it will not fail, it will just pending because uh, uh, the preset gas cost in bit BNB chain now is five grade, so usually if you are spending like two grade, you will probably be pending for a long time because nobody is paying below five grade. So you can see we don't have any confirmation yet, and let's come to the uh, MetaMask. It shows deposit fail, okay, because it's two grade. Let's try again. Just try again, they probably will work. So let's say four grade probably. Confirm. Okay, it didn't allow me to do so. So probably I have to use five grade as I wish. So sometimes just do that. I want to make it fast. I spent seven grade to do it. So it's now going, if it's not working, you can speed up here, okay? So I can speed up, then you will be speed up. Okay, so now it's done. So we can see the transaction, how it works. Okay, again, this is the 
BSC scan, it comes uh, lead me to the BSC scan and this is my address and uh, I'm checking with the the transaction, this transaction. So, uh, for, uh, by the way, if you want to reset the smart contract, uh, the MetaMask, you have to do it here, setting, advanced, and you can do a reset account. So, uh, do not worry, resetting your account will clear your transaction history, this will not change the balance in your account or require you to re-enter your secret recovery free. So it's easy, it's uh, safe. Uh, if you are really stuck with your transaction in MetaMask, you can try this, okay? So now we are back to the block explorer, the BSC scan. Okay, so this is the deposit we just saw. Click here, check the deposit. Okay, let's let's jump back, see what is missing. Okay. Okay. Okay, so you are checking this. This is the transaction hash. This is from our wallet. We are interacting with this wallet and uh, the sending from us to here, okay? So this is actually a staking, uh, weave staking contract, okay? We can click here, then it leads us to the weave staking contract. Okay, so uh, this is weave staking contract, it says contract here. So uh, we can also read the weave staking contract, then we can see, okay, how much people is uh, re interacting with the smart contract there's auto compound there's claim interest deposit this is us and you can see also how much like uh, transaction is done okay this is five weave 50 weave 700 weave okay they are all going into the staking contract so this is the contract so this is the actual contract you can see it's running on the blockchain okay so this is code you can read it and you can write it so let's do it in here. Let's read it as a proxy, okay? So there's, there's a, uh, if, if the contract is somehow similar, then there's a proxy contract that can use, you can to read and interact with the smart contract. So for example, this is the uh, weave staking contract and we are reading it, okay? So uh, this is, uh, the, it shows you some basic information. This is the DAO address, the treasury address and uh, there are different things you can see here we can find the function that we can call okay it also shows you this is the distributed contract so it will get the weave token in it will use this contract to distribute the the weave tokens to our users okay and uh, milestone owner this is the owner of the smart contract reward adjustment some uh, some contract is for your information or it's called by the owners, not by everyone. So you don't have to really check everything. So, uh, okay, now we see something we can check. User current deposit, we can uh, copy our wallet address, then we can check here. Check. Okay, 23. So this shows that uh, for this user, this wallet, it have currently 23 deposits okay we can also check the deposit ID okay for this user this watches it has totally 25 deposit ID that means two deposits are already withdrawn right so there are two missing so uh, from the very beginning to now you this deposit 25 times and there are still like 23 times of deposit is still with the contract Okay, and uh, you can check this. Uh, so you can check here, for example, user input. This is to enter the address. Let me enter the address. And this is the, to enter the uh, the pool ID, the deposit ID. So uh, let me check the deposit ID because I have 25 deposits, right? So I'll just check the first one, deposit ID, check. Okay, so it now shows that the deposit of this address the first deposit it is this kind of amount and uh, the deposit time is here and uh, the last compound time is here and the uh, next compound time is here okay so this is written in the uh, solidity code so you cannot read it. you don't know how to read it right so we have to use a converter to convert so this is the last time claim we can come to the sorry for the chinese but that's the best I can find. I'm not really in, uh, into it now. 
Okay, so it shows that uh, in Taipei time, the last claim is at March 24. Okay, so now we can check the next time lock for the next claim. Okay, so the next available time for the user to claim is March 31. Okay, so uh, this is how you read the smart contract and how you try to convert your time code to time stamp in a readable format. Okay, so this is reading the contract. You don't have to do anything fancy. You just like input your wallet address, and then you can try to get some info. But you can also interacting with as proxy, okay? You can interacting writing the contract. So writing the contract, you get a result. Writing something, you get a result. This is Web three, right? Writing something, you get a result. So in order to interact with the contract, you have to connect to the smart contract first. So let's click here, connect to Web three. You see MetaMask, okay? Okay, now it shows connected. So it's connected to our address, okay? So let's see what kind of function we can call. Uh, usually speaking, uh, whatever the function is open to the public, you can call. But uh, some function is limited to the owner because for the safety reason. Because sometimes you have to adjust the reward. Sometimes you have to like uh, do some upgrade. But the uh, most common things for a yield farming like compound or for weave is auto compound, deposit and withdraw. So let's try to show you something. Okay. So let's check the compound okay so for me right now I don't have I have the auto compound on so let me check Auto compound is on 75 one with token deposit staking so now I can uh, do the auto compound I remember there's an auto compound somewhere where's okay toggle auto compound I can click right Click again. Okay. So we are calling the Targo Auto Compound, and uh, this is the gas we pay. We we'll click confirm. And the other one is the same one because we click twice, so I just reject. Okay. So supposedly you will be calling the Auto Compound function. Okay, it's done. So right now, if we come back to the weave, you'll be off. So that. So this is how you're interacting with the writing the small contract on chain. Then you get the same result as you are interacting with the website. So for different protocols, they are providing a from M for the user to interact easily. Okay. So the 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 protocols they might close the front end for some reason, but uh, uh, you can still interact with the smart contract using the block explorer. So that's why you have to know some basic of the interaction. So. Uh, Setting compound, so now we can do a, a deposit. Let's do a deposit. So this is us. Do a deposit. No, this is a time code. Sorry. So we have to do the our address. It's our address. Let's how much width we have. One eighty nine. Let's try to come. Uh, give one 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 okay so remember this is 18 decimal so we have to add another 18 zero e. okay click right so I don't want to wait I want to like increase the gas let's give it a comfort you don't have to do a Five is normally totally fine. Okay. So uh, check here. We have so far seven five one, and this is so far one eight nine. Okay. And I want to enable auto compound as well. So I have to click here again. I want to enable it. I don't want to manually do it. Okay. So supposedly it's done. Let me check the transaction. Okay, it's done. So that's why you see the uh, staking value is changed. Okay, withdraw. Available value is also changed. So this is how you're interacting with it. 
So let's see about the withdraw function. So we can withdraw or uh, withdraw. Okay, we can withdraw the different IDs, right? So I don't want to really mess up with my milestone reward. So I want to check the savings one. I don't want to ruin my like earliest result, uh, earliest deposit. Okay, so before we have a deposit ID of 25, now we query again, should be 26, see? because we add deposit another one, right? So we just want to remove the last one, 26. So we will write and withdraw 26. Okay, convert. Let's go. Okay, it's done. So let's take a look at the transaction. Okay. Okay, so this is transaction we just done. Then we call the transaction. Then we are interacting with this contract. So if we click on the decode input data, then you will see exactly what kind of function we are calling. We are manually interacting with the smart contract, right? Not to the front end. So let's see that. So this is the function we call token ID 26. And this is a function withdraw. So supposedly we should get, okay, see? The stake amount is back to before we make the 111 token stake already, right? So now it's back to normal. Everything is back before we do the live stream. So this is how you, how you work with the blockchain explorer, okay? So uh, that's it. That's it for now. So today, th this is all we have today. We just want to walk you through how to read your transaction, some basic concept about knowing how smart contract work, how to speed up your transaction, how to read and trace your transaction back to the source. So if you know how to do it, then it's usually helpful when you try to uh, like uh, feedback to us about this uh, transaction ID, where is your next compound or uh, your token is gone, something like that. We always need your wallet and your transaction ID to identify the uh, different transactions you had made, right? So uh, that's it. That's it for today. So uh, the, let me check who is uh, checking. Okay. So uh, that's it for today, and uh, let us know your feedback uh, and what kind of topic you want to learn next time. So next time we will probably try to arrange a different topic to help our to help weavers to know more, pick up more knowledge about uh, blockchain, DeFi, transaction, and crypto. Okay, so that's it for now, today. Thank you. Please leave a comment down below. Help us to uh, boost the algorithm and like uh, attract to to get to 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 make to allow more users to know about weave learn about crypto 